Welcome to Operations Research Sensitivity Analysis Lecture Series by Professor Joyjit Ghosh. This is the first lecture of a four series lectures. This lecture will be on introduction to sensitivity analysis, need of sensitivity analysis. He will also be discussing the sensitivity analysis of change in the objective coefficient of non-basic variable by conventional simplex method. So, do not miss and watch the full video. For the next video in the lecture series, please click the suggested video link above. You may also click on the playlist at end of the video to access all the videos. Please subscribe this channel and yes, do not forget to like and share. Also click on the bell icon to receive instant information of new videos uploaded. Thank you. Hello friends. Welcome to this lecture series. This lecture series will be divided into four lectures. In the first lecture, we'll be discussing about the basics of sensitivity analysis, and we'll discuss the sensitivity analysis for a change in the coefficient of a non-basic variable in the objective functions. This will do in the first lecture for con uh, conventional using conventional simplex method. In the second lecture, same thing we'll be doing. That is, we'll see the sensitivity analysis uh, or do the sensitivity analysis of a non-basic variables, the coefficient of a non-basic variables in the objective functions using revised simplex method. So, if you are interested in revised simplex method, you should see the next lecture. If you are interested in conventional methods, you should see this lecture. In the third lecture, we will be discussing the change in coefficient of uh, basic variable in the objective functions using conventional simplex method. And in the fourth le lecture, we will be seeing or uh, studying the sensitive analysis of a change of a basic variable or the coefficient of a basic variables in the objective function by revised simplex method. So, in this lecture, let us be very, very clear, we will be discussing the basics of sensitivity analysis and we will be carrying out a sensitivity analysis for change in coefficient of non-basic variable in the objective function of the linear programming problem. So let us start and that will do by conventional sim uh, simplex method. So let us start. What is sen sensitivity analysis? See uh, the linear programming solution that we do by whatever method uh, possible, we consider that everything is fixed. We consider that the technology is fixed, the prices are fixed, the resources are fixed, the variables that you have taken, everything is fixed, the profit is fixed. But in real life, it does not happen like this. Suppose you are having a two machines, a machine is capable of producing this much amount of component per day and the other machine is capable of producing this uh, Y amount of component per day. It is not necessary that they will continuously produce X and Y component respectively. It may happen that the machine A, due to some breakdown, uh, the capacity may decrease or it may happen due to upgradation of machine B, the capacity increases or it may happen that you have purchased another machine. Uh, <coughs> and accordingly the problem will change or it may happen that uh, <coughs> certain resources are changed certain technology has changed so all these are not taken into account of our problem in our problem now sensitivity analysis deals with it's basically a check to see how sensitive the solution of the particular linear program, programming problem means how sensitive a particular solution is to different changes. Now, what are the changes that are possible? So if Cj in the objective functions may change, Cj of the basic variables, Cj of the non-basic variables. The right hand side of the constraints may change, the AIGS of the constraint may change, the coefficient of the AIGS may change, a non-basic variable may change, addition of a new variable, addition of a secondary constraint. So all these changes can take place. Now, is my solution sensitive to this? If so, up to what level? So that we'll be discussing in sensitivity analysis. 
so we will not be discussing all this because that will be huge uh, it will be a lecture series of i think uh, 15 to 20 lectures so that is not possible uh, my objective is to just to introduce you to sensitivity analysis and that will do by studying the first two um, 1a and 1b that is we will be doing the sensitive analysis for changes of the coefficient of a basic variable in the objective function and we will study the sensitivity analysis of a change of the coefficient of a non-basic variable in the objective function. So these two will be studying, these two will be studying, these two changes will be studying. In this lecture, we will be studying the change in coefficient of non-basic variable by conventional simplex method. In the second lecture, we will be studying the change of the coefficient of non-basic variable by revised simplex method. So if you are not interested in revised simplex method, you can skip the second lecture and directly go to the third lecture. In the third lecture, we will be discussing the change in coefficient of basic variables by conventional method and in the fourth lecture we will be discussing the change in coefficient of basic variables by device simplex method. So let's start with an example here. So this is the problem. <clears throat> so this problem we will be solving first by conventional simplex method. So <clears throat> if you are watching this, you should hold this video, pause this video and solve this yourself by conventional simplex method. I am not going to discuss the solution of conventional method in this lecture. Rather, I will present the solution and then I will move on with the sensitivity analysis. So if you are <coughs> learning and you want to learn, you are interested in learning, then you at this point you should pause and solve it by yourself. I will show you the results. You can check the results in the next slide. Okay, so by now I hope you have solved it yourself and you want to eager to check the results whether you have done it correctly or not. So these are the results here. So it, it takes three iterations to solve this particular problem and the solution is that x3 is uh, <coughs> 6 by 5 and x1 is 27 by 5 and this is around I think 138 by 5, 138 by 5. These are my solutions. These are my solutions. This is my x3. This is my x1. And this is my z. So, this is the solution of the problem. Now, let's see. What is my basic variables? My basic variables are currently x3 and x1. My non-basic variables are x2 in the final iteration table. In the final iteration table, x2, x3 and x5. In the final table, my basic variables are x3 and x1 and my non-basic variables are x2, x4 and x5. Now I am interested in, the, in this lecture. We are interested in changing the objective coefficient of a non-basic variable. That means if this changes, whether this solution will remain optimal or not. If so, what is the range up to which it will remain optimal? So that is the objective of this today's lecture. So here, let's say, I have changed C2 to C2. So, now, this change, where it will reflect? Where it will reflect the change here? In the final iteration table. Uh, I am interested in the final iteration table only. Will it reflect here? Any changes here? No. Will it reflect here in the right hand side of the equation? No. Will it reflect here? No. Will it reflect here? No. Will it reflect here? No. This, this are unaffected by the change in this. Only thing that is only thing that will be affected is this. Only thing that is affected will be C J minus Z, C two minus Z two. That will be affected. Rest nothing will be affected. So I am interested in finding out this one. So <clears throat> if Z is this one, is thirty three by five. If Z is this one. So, 
C2 minus Z2 will be 33 by 5, 33 by 5 should be less than equal to 0. The solution will remain optimal, the solution will remain optimal as long as this is valid. If this is less than 0, then everything else is less than 0. So, if this is less than 0, then the solution is optimal. So, basically means C2 should be less than equal to 33 by 5. This solution will remain optimal and <coughs> when value of C2 is less than or equal to 33 by 5. That basically means if I change the value of uh, this 3, if I change this value 3, to 4 will it remain optimal of course it will remain optimal because 4 is less than 33 by 5 if it is 6 will it be optimal yes it will be optimal if it is 6 because 6 is less than 33 by 5 if it is 7 will it be optimal no the solution will never be optimal because this will become positive it will become 2 by 5 so then the solution will not be optimal now a question might come to your mind why you are only dealing with um, the final iteration table? Why you are uh, not checking the um, first two iteration table? We are not interested in the first two iteration table. It doesn't matter to us. I am interested in the solution and whether my change in C2 is affecting the solution or not, I am interested in that. So I am not bothered what uh, iteration or the other iteration methods, <coughs> iteration steps, but I am interested in the final. So. It doesn't matter what steps you have taken. I am only interested in the final iteration because I am here checking the sensitivity. If I change how the solution is affected, that is my interest. So change in 3 to C2, how it will affect my solution. It will not affect the solution until and unless C2 becomes more than 33 by 5. Rest within that value solution will remain optimal so that is the sensitivity of this particular solution with respect to the coefficient of a non basic variable that is x2 in this case now the problem is that okay if i change it to 3 uh, 3 is changed to 7 what will happen do i have to redo the problem no you don't have to redo the problem you start from here again so here you get uh, 2 by 5 here so this will be the entering variable so i'll show you in the next slide so this is the condition for it to be remain optimal so if i change it to seven what will happen so if i change it to seven so this this will become two by seven if this is 7 then this becomes 2 by 7 then this will be the entering variable so x2 will enter so what will exit this will be divided by 6 divided by 5 will be 6 and uh, this will be 7 by 5 so this will be 27 by 27 by 5 so this will be exiting x1 will be exiting so again we will find out the final uh, uh, fr fr will have to find out this is the pivot so this is the pivot cell <coughs> accordingly we will create the next so this is not an optimal solution obviously we will iterate towards the next optimal solution this is shown in the next here so we will solve this and we will get this solution so here this is negative this is negative all these are negative so therefore this is an optimal solution and my current solution will be this one x3 is equal to this and x2 is equal to this and you can find out the value of z so this is how we solve the uh, for a change which is outside the range uh, then we have to again iterate it and same thing if we do if we take this value and if you start from the scratch you will get the same solution you will get the same solution here so you can see the middle steps doesn't affect we are only interested in the final steps so this will be also run in three iteration so i hope this is clear in the next lecture we will be doing the same problem in the uh, using the revised uh, simplex method so and in the third lecture we will be discussing 
the change in objective coefficient of a basic variable that is change in the coefficient of a non basic of a basic variable in the objective function so don't miss out that lecture and thank you for watching this video